we are looking at the translations on page 161 from chapter 25. We'll begin with number 2. And so it begins over here, the top. We have Amar Moshe El Ha'am Natan Adonai Lachem Et Ha'aretz Esher Nishba La Avotechem. Okay, so we have a fairly standard beginning here. Amar Moshe, Moses said, El Ha'am to the people. And then here's the content of what he said, beginning here. Natan Adonai Lachem, the Lord, Yahweh, gave to you, this is our second masculine plural suffix on the preposition Lamed, et ha'aretz, what did the Lord give to you? The land. Esher, which, and we have nishba, with the noon and the hiric prefix on the root shava. You could be looking at a nafal perfect, possibly a nafal participle, although, as we can see from the theme vowel, participle would be a comets. Because of the noon heric prefix and R1 was shawa, we could have a cal imperfect first common plural, because with a guttural in R3 we would have a patach theme vowel. But shava does not have a cal form. And in addition, we're sort of expecting something that the Lord is doing here. And so we're kind of expecting a third masculine singular. So nafal perfect is our best bet. Third masculine singular of shava. And in the nafal, this is an active meaning. In this case, it would be he swore. And so which he swore, lavotechem, to, and then avot is a irregular plural. It's got a feminine ending on a masculine plural. And then we have the chem, it's our second masculine plural ending again, suffix. And the yod tells us that it's a plural noun, which we already knew, to your fathers. So let's go through that. Moses said to the people, the Lord gave to you the land which he swore to your fathers. Let's move on to our next one now. It'll be number three. It begins over here. We have Vaata Hishmaru Vaata Hishamru All right, let's begin. We have va'ata and now hishamaru. Now this is an interesting form. Notice the hay with the hiric in front of it. This might immediately make us think of a hifiel, but notice that we see in the, under the first root letter, we see a comets and a doubled first root letter. This immediately makes us think nafal. And the hay makes us think either imperative or some type of infinitive. We see hishamaru. Of course, the shurik at the end tells us we don't have an infinitive. So we're going to have an imperative here. And that's the masculine plural ending from the imperfect. So this becomes an imperative masculine plural. Shamar in the nafal stem is somewhat reflexive. It means take heed to yourselves or keep yourselves or be careful. So take heed to yourselves. This is lachem would be to you and I'm sort of adding the yourselves idea borrowing it from the nafal which is reflexive. That's a little bit of a, an English addition. So take heed to you or take heed to yourselves. Pen tishkahu. So we have lest Tishkachun, here we have a, a root, it's pretty clearly shakach. We have a potential imperfect prefix here with a 
Herrick tells us it's either Nafal or Cal, and the first root letter here has a silent schwa underneath it. That tells us that we have a Cal, imperfect. The Tav could be several things, but the Shurik on the end tells us that it's second masculine, plural. So take heed to yourselves, lest you forget et Adonai, lest you forget the Lord. The rest of the sentence says something about the Lord. Esher Asa, who did imachem with you, or perhaps who showed to you, we might say that in English, who did with you chesed, loving kindness, v'im b'nechem, and with your sons. So here we have b'nei, we know that this is plural noun with a pronominal suffix because of the yod between the pronominal suffix and the noun itself, b'nechem. So going back through this, and now, take heed to you, lest you forget Yahweh, lest you, lest you forget the Lord, who did with you loving kindness and with your sons.